together. Amen. And we're going to learn some things together. Kevin, I'm turning this red one off and the headset on. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <clears throat> Bless the Lord. Just bring up a few of the, just turn all the can lights up once, Kevin, all the, to the maximum, will you? And turn this one light right here out of my eyes. This, this, thank you, the can light, thank you. Appreciate that. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah, turn, the, turn something on so people can get to see their, uh, good, there, you can see the, take your notes. Now, some of you are going to want to take notes this morning because you're going to need this. Some of you have questions that I'm going to answer, and this is going to be really good. don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be good. All right, a loaf of bread and fish later. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Chili and grilled cheese next week. How many is ready to learn? How many students do we have here? How many students of the Bible do we have here this morning? Well, get ready to learn because we're going to learn together. Now, we've been teaching your questions and we're not anywhere as near done. We're going to continue on the power of fasting eventually. But not this morning. I'm sorry to disappoint you. This morning, um, we have had some questions. And I'm going to take general questions from the audience today. And then I'm going to teach from them. And Kevin, you might want to leave the red mic on because I'm going to have some different people from the congregation come up. And um, so uh, if you want to just turn it up and down when they get to it, that would be probably better. Because, uh, but uh, we're going to, uh, yeah, you can just turn this, mute it until somebody needs it, and then unmute it. Um, we've had questions and questions and questions about different things. I'll teach a question. I'll teach, teach an answer to one of your questions, and you're not here, <laughs> so I have to make you a tape. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the see what kind of Bible questions or questions about our services, um, or the way we have our services. Now you know, I want you to think about Jesus for just a minute. Can you see Jesus on the mountainside, on the Sermon on the Mount? And he talked a while. And then different times he would be teaching. And do you remember his disciples? They would almost interrupt him sometimes. And they'd say, Master, what were you talking about when you said thus and such? What did you mean that no rich man would... It was easier for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle. That, what did you mean by this, Jesus? What did you mean by that? And he would explain it to him. What did you mean about the parable of the sower? What, are, what, what does the bird stand for that come and take the seed away? And he would answer their questions. And yeah, the, 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 the disciples came up with questions. And some of their questions, to me, were, were obvious. But Jesus didn't think any of their questions were dumb. You know, Jesus never said to any of the disciples, that is a dumb question. Not one time did he ever say, that is a really dumb question, Peter. He didn't. He took their question, and he gave them an answer. You'll never have a question in your life if you'll take it to God that he'll say that was a dumb question. He will, he will, he's gentle. And he will answer, he cares for your question. He cares about what's, uh, what's bothering you and what uh, is curious to you and what's, uh, you know, do you understand where I'm coming from? So, as you're thinking about your questions, I want you to turn for a second to Matthew 5-6. Uh,
This scripture was on my heart this morning. Blessed are they which do hunger and do thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. As we're getting, getting ready to answer some questions, I have a question for you. Are you spiritually hungry? Do you want more of God than today than you did yesterday? Or are you just perfectly satisfied with where you are? The type of complacency and lack of passion that does not desire more of God is what causes religious stagnancy. Have you ever been to a stagnant pool of water? Just like Lazarus after three days, he stinketh. Amen. And a stagnant Christian stinketh. Are you listening to me? If you don't want to move on any further in your Christian walk, bless your heart. I'm not being mean to you. I love you. I hope you get shook out of it, but you stink. God thinks you stink. Your friends think you stink, and I think you stink. <laughs> You've got to get out of that complacency. I heard Lynette Hagen say this week that the average Christian goes to church twice a month. Used to be, in the days gone by, it was three times a week. So they'd average at least, you know, 10, 12 times a month. Monday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. When I, went to, when I was first got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, I went to church three times a week. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And I never missed any of them. I worked 11 to 7 shift, took an hour nap, and went to church Sunday morning. Why did I do that? I was just 16, 17, 18 years old. Why in heaven's name would I do that? Because I was hungry. I was hungry for more of God. <laughs> Have any of you all been busy working, been busy doing this, been busy doing that, and, and not eating? And you go, finally, you just go, oh my gosh, I am starving to death. If I have to, and I've, I've done this before, I have got in my car and drove all the way to Cape because, no, nothing, nothing sounds right. I don't want any of this. I'm starving. I want some, one certain th something that I was just craving it. So I got to go to Cape and I go, I'll go and get it. Have any of you done that? Yep. What do you think, what do you think happens to you if you, let's just say, oh, you know, I ate twice last month. Well, heck, I'm not hungry now. I ate twice last month. You'd be malnourished, wouldn't you? Malnourished, dehydrated. And some of you are malnourished and dehydrated spiritually. And it's not just because you don't come to church as much as you should. But that's part of it. Now, I'm not going to get on to you and start preaching at you, but you, you should be in church as much as you can. Because, why? That's where the feeding comes. The Bible says that this is the, that, the, the, that his word is a bread unto our spirits. And it's water unto our thirsty souls. Amen? So anyway, all that to say, there's got to be a spiritual hunger in you. You cannot be satisfied with where you are spiritually. Some of you are. And I just want to, now, just let me shake you. I'm going to get in the spirit. I'm just going to shake you. Snap out of it. Amen. Snap out of it and get the hunger that you once had when you first found the Lord. And just, let's get on fire for God. I want this church to be a church that's on fire for God. I want to be radical. I want to be passionate. I want to be excited about the Lord. Amen. And I want you to be too. Because 
For one thing, it's a whole lot more fun that way. Riding the fence is really not all that fun. It's a little uncomfortable on the seat. Are you understanding where I'm saying? Amen. So, <laughs> let's get off the fence and let's get on fire for Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Rich uh, brought a question and said that two or three other people had questions about, and we're going to just talk about it, about tongues in church. Tongues. Now, I want to hear your questions on the subject of tongues. Now, if you don't come up with a question fast enough, I'm just going to go ahead and start answering them before you ask them. So, you didn't start fast enough. What are tongues? What is tongues? And why tongues? What is tongues? Tongues is a language. There's the word tongues, which is a known language, an earthly language. There's the tongues in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, which is the Greek word glossolalia, and it's an unknown tongue. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, Although I speak with the tongues of men and the tongues of angels. So the tongues that we have in our church, how many of you are baptized in the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues? Quite a bit of you do. Now, those tongues sometimes are tongues of men and sometimes are tongues of angels. There's no requirement that it be one or the other because Paul said you could speak in the tongues of men and you could speak in the tongues of angels. So tongues are a language of the Spirit. Tongues are a sign of the believer. I hope anybody's taking notes. Number one, Tongues are a language of men and angels. Two, tongues are a sign of the believer. In Mark chapter 16, write this down. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 18. Jesus said, These signs shall follow, signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. The second thing that Jesus said that you would know that a person is a believer now, this doesn't mean that you're not a believer if you don't speak in tongues, but it's a sign of the believer. Are you listening? Now, I want you to really examine what I'm saying. I have thoroughly studied this subject for 30 years. Probably you will not stump me with a question, but you might. And if you do, I'll say I don't know. But, although I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and then here Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall what? First thing is you're going to cast out devils. And the second thing, you're going to speak with new tongues. Those are signs of the believer. If you go to a church and there is absolutely no, but no speaking in tongues ever going on there. Now, that doesn't mean that those people don't believe in God. It doesn't mean that they don't believe in Jesus. But it means they're not allowing all of the signs. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, towards the very end of the chapter, it might be verse 28, I can't remember what verse it is. The Apostle Paul says, Covet earnestly to prophesy and forbid not speaking with tongues. We should never forbid it. It shouldn't be forbidden. Any churches that forbid speaking in tongues, they may love the Lord, they may be saved, but they're disobeying the instruction of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 14, 28, I think it is, where he says, don't forbid it. Okay? Michael. This is true. People will say, uh, when you were saved, you were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, there's an element of truth with that. Are you listening to me? There is an element of truth with that. When you were saved, you received the Holy Spirit. 
you receive the seed of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Let me explain the difference. Everybody watch me real close. In John chapter 20, verse 22, Jesus breathed on his disciples. These are the 12 disciples. Now look at the 12 disciples. See them in your mind. Jesus breathed on them. And in the Greek, it says, present tense, he said, receive ye, present tense, right now while I'm breathing, receive ye the Holy Ghost. That's what it says in the Greek. So the disciples received the Holy Ghost in John 20, 22. Unless my verse is off, but I think it's right. Uh, Because I don't have notes on this. But then he told them, he said now in Acts 1, 8, he told his disciples, he says, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. He said, you're going to receive power after the Holy Ghost, Acts 1-8, is come upon you, and you're going to be witnesses unto me. So he said, now wait, because the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Well, that's a confusing, isn't it? He says, in 20, uh, 2022, he's breathes on him and says, receive the Holy Ghost. And then he turns right around and says, now I want you to wait in Jerusalem and then you're going to be endued with power from on high because the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you well I thought they already had the Holy Ghost they did let me ask you a question this is a glass of water is it not Uh, I just had a sip of water I have water in me I have water in me but I'm not full of water. Are you listening? There's more to drink. There's more to be had. And so don't be satisfied with, well, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. That's all the Holy Spirit I want. Oh, please don't limit yourself. Please don't limit the Holy Spirit. There's more. So then over here, if you'll look in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, Uh, the disciples were uh, on the day of Pentecost were all in one place in one accord and suddenly there came the sound of a rushing mighty wind and sat on them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues they were filled with the Holy Ghost well I thought and Jesus breathed on them and they received the Holy Ghost they did they received the Holy Ghost they had a drink they had a drink But that's not all there was. Then they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? And then in Ephesians, I can't tell you what verse, chapter, is it 518? How dear. The Confiscation is Ephesians. Yes, I was right. Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians 5.18, it says, Do not be drunk with wine. Now, y'all, they're getting drunk with wine. Quit it right now. Amen. (laughs) Quit it. Quit your stinking drinking. Sipping saints or slipping saints. (laughs) So quit it. But he says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with with the Spirit. Now here, Paul is talking to Christians who are already filled with the Spirit. They're already saved, got the Holy Spirit intimate salvation, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and now he's telling them, you're saved, you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you speak in tongues, you have the gifts of the Spirit. He says, now just make sure that you're filled with the Spirit. The Greek word for be filled with the Spirit here is a, is a uh, ongoing, continuous verb tense, which means be filled and keep continually being filled with the Spirit. How many of you know we leak? Have you ever noticed that? Oh, I just got touched by the Lord. I came to church. I got filled with the Spirit. Oh, I'm just so excited. I got such a blessing. And you go home and three or four people do something that hurts your feelings and this and that and da 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 and you get offended and you go through all this stuff and you all, everything leaks out that you got on Sunday. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's why you have to stay filled with the Spirit. Continually be being filled with the Spirit. 
And there's another place where it says, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So that's a... Oh, it's the next verse. Uh, yeah, okay. Speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So that... that uh, Offering praise with voices and instruments and making melody with all of your heart to the Lord. That, that, all of that helps us stay filled with the Spirit. Okay? Um, so we, we said it's a sign of the believer. I'm waiting for anybody to interrupt me with a question. If you don't interrupt me with a question, I'm just going to keep going. Anna? Yes, ma'am. So then, is, is there always an interpretation? Good question. We're sitting in church. Someone is speaking in tongues. Is there always an interpretation? Well, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, he said, Let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Uh, I'm not sure what verse it is. And then also... But let me finish answering Michael's question. I forgot to this one. Because he said, Michael said, some people will say uh, the, the tongues have done, been done away with. Because there's that passage in 1 Corinthians 13 that says, when the perfect is come, then these uh, prophecies will cease and tongues will cease. When the perfect comes, these others will cease. Well, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 7 Daniel, if you can find that real fast. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7, the Apostle Paul said this about the gifts. He said, to the, he said to the church at Corinth. And they had lots of the gifts. He said, now I pray, he said, that none of you come behind, that you become behind in no gift. How many gifts did he want them to fall behind? I looked this Greek word up, fall behind, and it, and it just means what it says, fall behind. He didn't want you to, to, to be lacking, in other words, in any of the gifts. How many gifts should we still be having? He said all of them. He says, I don't want you to, to lose any of the gifts. Awaiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus. So tongues are not ceased. In heaven, tongues may cease, but I doubt it because we're going to speak with the tongues of men and of angels. So tongues probably won't even cease then. But uh, some of the other gifts won't be necessary. But it'll, communication will still be necessary in heaven. Now, to answer Anna's question, <clears throat> I have to answer Anna's question in a long way. <laughs> um, the scripture tells us, Kevin, I, can, I can't answer yours. Okay, you want to... What are the rules? Okay, well, we'll just get to that. First of all, you have to understand things about something about tongues. You've got to you've got to understand this about tongues. There is your private tongues. Say private. Say prayer. And prayer tongues. Then you have corporate. Say corporate. Or gift tongues. Now, your private prayer language tongues is for you and God. Okay? That is for you and God. And that can be used to express your praise uh, when we gather together. But the best part of using it is for you to use it at home or when you're driving down the road or when it's just you and God. And that's why the Apostle Paul tells us, he says, now when, you're, when you come together, he said, if someone speaks in a tongue, let him pray that he might interpret. So when we have someone speak out, you've heard me speak out in tongues as a message. See, there's two uses for tongues. I said there was private tongues and then there's public tongues. There's two uses for tongues. There is tongues where we're talking to God because in verse 2 of 1 Corinthians 14, he said, He that speaketh an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. So, uh, that use is speaking to God. Then we turn around in a few verses later, he says, 
when I speak in tongues, how shall it profit you? And let's find that verse. How shall it profit you unless I speak to you by revelation, by knowledge, by teaching? What is that? That's God talking to us. So that it's a, it's it. Sometimes God will use tongues in our as our spirit prayeth. Scripture says in First Corinthians fourteen, my spirit. When a man speaks in an unknown tongue, he says, my spirit prayeth. We're praying to God. We're talking to God. That's praise. That does not need to be interpreted. That's between you and God. And a bunch of us might do that at the same time. And because we're not talking to you. Hello? Are you listening to me? But there's times that the tongues is a message in tongues. We call it a message in tongues. And that message in tongues is a message for the entire congregation, and that needs to be interpreted. But don't get too picky. Some people get so picky. Well, what are the rules? Okay, I didn't mean it that way, Kevin. But don't be too picky. <laughs> don't be too picky. Because just as, sure, just as sure as you go judge somebody and say, well, they speak in tongues, and they're all doing it at the same time, and blah, 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 blah. Listen, on the day of Pentecost, there was 120 of them speaking in tongues at the same time. Right? Hello? Read your Bible. In Acts chapter 19, verse 1 through 6, the disciples that were Ephesus, all 12 of them spoke in tongues. Corporate meeting, all of them spoke in tongues at the same time. So, so is the Bible contradicting itself? No. There's two rules. There's a rule for public. There's a rule for private. Public tongues as worship to God does not need to be interpreted because you're talking to God. It's all about who you're talking to. If God is talking through you, you're going to know that a forcefulness comes in that message. You've heard Betty speak in tongues. Vicki Brandt has. Brother Ron has uh, several different ones in the church have spoken out in tongues and then somebody else would interpret. Well, that is a message in tongues that needs to be interpreted because it's coming from God to talk to us. But if it's, if, if it's us talking to God, there's no need to interpret it. Okay? And it's just like, now we could all stand up right now and I'd say, now all of you start talking to God and just talk to God about what's going on in your life. And every one of you could, in English, be telling God, oh God, you know, this is bothering me. Oh, please touch my daughter, touch my son, touch this one. And every one of you is talking to God and God is understanding everything that every one of you is talking in English, right? Are you listening to me? But nobody around you is getting anything out of it because they're talking to God themselves. Listen to me. You got it? Same thing when we all stand up. If we're all singing in the spirit together in tongues. Well, I'm not talking to you. Are you listening to me? I'm not talking to you. You've seen me up here on the front. And I don't, honestly, I'm not, I'm not a show off spiritual. I'm show off in other ways, but I'm not a show off about spiritual things. If I'm worshiping God, you ask Nancy. <laughs> when we first got saved, she, she said, uh, or married, I mean, when we first got married, she said, she told me, she says, I didn't even know if I was saved because I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be dancing around the house and speaking in tongues and singing in tongues and then I might even interpret in tongues just in the bathroom while I'm right before I'm brushing my teeth and, and I'm so happy and joyful in the morning and jumping around and everything. And she said, I didn't even know if I was saved because you were just praising the Lord all the time. But you know, but that was me and the Lord. So, but, but, I'm, but, you know, when you hear me singing in tongues, see, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 that I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding. Well, what's that talking about? English tongues. English tongues. Somebody had a hand raised. Anna. Mm 
No, okay, no. Now, elaborate a little bit so I'm not totally with you. Mm -hmm. But there's, there is no one in here as interpreted. Okay. But now you're not speaking to yourself. You're speaking out loud. It's love. Right. But no one has interpreted so that God doesn't have nothing for the rest of us to tell us. That's what's interesting about this. That's what is interesting about this. Now, some of that time, I just may be talking to God. I may just be fellowshipping with God. And again, that's none of anybody else's business. But... If it is something where God's communicating a revelation to me, let me explain this to you. When tongues comes and, and you're being revealed something, you might hear me say, oh, yes, Lord, yes, I know, yes. Or you might hear me say that sometime or whatever. Oh, yes, Lord, okay, yeah. And I'm speaking in tongues, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yes, Lord, yeah, okay. Well, he's telling me something. What you don't know, <laughs> what you don't know is I'm tell, I'll tell you in the sermon. And I won't say, now God told me in tongues in the sermon, blah, blah, blah. No, I, to do this. No, I, I, but I'll tell you later. I was up here praying for some people this morning, and I was praying in tongues a little bit. And the Lord told me specifically to tell um, Kenya something specific. And, he, and, and same thing with Julie. He said, now tell her this. And so I whispered over to her. Well, I was kind of praying in tongues out here, blah, 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 whatever. And, you know, and then, and, then I, and then I whispered in Julie's ear. I said, I said, that's what the Lord said. Well, I was interpreting it, but I was just telling her because it was just for her. One time, this is an interesting story. Don't, that's why I'm saying don't be too careful to be picky. These rules were not meant to be real rigid. They weren't meant to be rigid. Paul never meant to give them to us rigid. The rules were not. People who get all rigid with rules are just worry too much. Relax a little. But Dr. Lester Sumrall started, 50, uh, started churches in 50 countries of the world. 50 countries. And in his service in South Bend, Indiana, a lady stood up and began to speak in tongues and no one interpreted. And Dr. Sumrall has a gift of interpretation, but he didn't have the interpretation. And nobody had the interpretation. He didn't have the interpretation. He waited. He waited. He waited. He waited. Nobody had the interpretation. And he said, Doc, this is not fitting Dr. Sumrall's theology. He don't know what to do. So he says, Lord, what do I do? He says, I don't want you to do anything. He said, I want you to preach your message. So he gets up, preaches the message. <coughs> At the end of the service, there was an altar call given. A little old lady on the back pew comes to the lady who gave the message in tongues and says, how did you know perfect Hebrew? And she says, I don't know any Hebrew. And she said, uh, well, you called my name in Hebrew. You told me that Jesus was the Messiah. And she says, I'm a Jew. I'm not a Christian. I don't know anything about this. And she says, this has to be God. And she got saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Story after story, I can tell you along these lines. So, you know, unless something is extremely weird, don't worry about it. If it gets too far out of hand, if I have to drag somebody out of here, I will. Yes, Andrew, or Daniel. Right, if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and God. Now, this is speaking of a message, a message in tongues. This is not, let me tell you something about the laws of interpretation. Oh, dear, I need three hours to teach this class. Well, but, but there are laws of Bible interpretation. Everybody listen to me real close. When you hear somebody on TV, preacher, or anybody else, Remember, there's laws to interpret the Bible. 
The Bible does not contradict itself. So you always look at the Bible from the Bible. If somebody says, well, the Bible says a man should not have long hair. It's a shame to him. Then I say to them, and the apostle Paul said three verses later, that we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. So the context of not having long hair for men is it was a custom. Jesus had long hair. He was a Nazarite. Nazarites had a vow of not cutting their hair or their beard. The strongest man in the world, Samson, with that old heifer Delilah, <laughs> had long hair. And when his hair was cut, the anointing of God left him because he made a covenant to not cut his hair. So to say that no man can have long hair doesn't fit with the rest of the Bible. You have to understand the context of what the Bible is saying. When the Bible says something, you have to be a good Bible interpreter. You've got to go with the rules of Bible interpretation. I'll give you all eight of them one day if you'd like. There's eight rules of Bible interpretation. But the one main rule that I like, well, there's another one that I really like. Who is speaking and to whom are they speaking? If Jesus is talking and he's talking specifically to the Jews, be careful that you don't put that off on all Christians. He may be just talking to the Jews for a certain situation or era. Some of the, some of the things that they, people pick at the Apostle Paul about, the Apostle Paul said, let the women keep silent in the churches. Let the women keep silent in the churches. Two, three verses later, he says, now, now women, when you're praying or prophesying in church, make sure your head's covered. I thought you just said women to keep silent in churches. Now you're saying when you're in church, make sure your head's covered. Well, you have to understand, he was talking to a specific church, answering a specific question that that specific church had where women were hollering out questions at their husbands, and he told them, he said, now you just wait till you get home and ask your husbands those questions at home. Don't interrupt the church service. That's what that whole thing was about, if you study the culture of the, the scripture. And so he wasn't saying women can't talk in church because he turns around and tells them, now when you pray or prophesy in church, women, make sure your head's covered. And we don't do hair covering today. In those days, people who did, didn't have their hair covered, some of them were considered prostitutes. Well, we don't have that in our culture today. It, you know, if, if you were considered a prostitute, if you did not have your hair covered, then I would say, women of Father's Arms Fellowship, you better wear your hair covering. We won't want the people to think you're a prostitute. But we don't have that in our culture. Are you listening to me? Is anybody learning anything or am I just rambling? Okay, I don't, I don't want to ramble, but I do want to help you. Julie? Here we go. Good question. Uh, Julie says, what about people who want to speak in tongues, have never spoken in tongues, but then... Or maybe they have spoken tongues, but they feel like they're just making the words come out and they're just making it up. Now, to answer that question, Debbie Freeze is going to come and answer that question. <laughs> I want Debbie to tell you the story when she was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then I'm going to answer this with something that was very interesting that the Lord showed me about this subject. We may do this a little bit more later. Do you care if we do this another week sometime? I mean, seriously, do you mind? Okay, go ahead, Deb. Take your time. No, your time. Don't worry. Don't look at your watch. Wait a minute. It's not on. Kevin, the red one. Unmute it. Hello? Is it on? Am I on? Unmute it, Kev. Oh, now it is. Now it's on. Okay. okay. Well, I have always been in church. I want to give my mom praise for that because she always kept me in church as, as a little girl. And, um, 
but in the like in the late eighties, I um, I don't know. I got kind of at an unrest. I was in a church really that didn't teach tongues or you know supernatural healings, and uh, so. But I just kind of the Lord started waking me up at night, and I would read the Bible, and I kind of got into the Acts and to to Marks, and you know just some of the the other scriptures, and I just I don't know. I didn't understand it, but I. I just couldn't sleep, and so I talked to a girl at church, and she said, well, you know, I've kind of had that questioning, too. So anyway, it, it ended up making a long story short. There were five No, no, women, make it long. Well, there were five women in the church. <laughs> there were five women in the church who were kind of really questioning, and, and God was kind of dealing with them at night, and just, just like it was me. And so we decided we would get together, and we would pray just to see, you know, if there was something going on somewhere that really we hadn't thought about or just whatever it was so we got together on a tuesday morning and we would pray and so then eventually we we decided we would just go visit this charismatic church in cape you know just to kind of see you know i mean i'd been to one or two but i didn't understand any of the teachings i had gone with a friend and it was just really foreign to me i just had no understanding of raising you know people raising their hands or anything so we went and i remember the first thing we said on the back row because we thought well was we'll sit on the back row, and, and if anything, you know, that we don't understand, we'll just go out the door, you know, we'll just leave, you know, we just didn't understand <laughs> it at all, you know. So we, we sat back there, and I, I saw people raise their hands, and they were weeping, and I, I just didn't get it. I was like, you know, in my church, we, you know, you have your sermon, and then you cry because, are you going to go to the altar, you know, and, and uh, I was just, I was just astounded. I just couldn't believe they were crying, and, and weeping, and, uh, so, but it seemed every, we would pray on Tuesday and on Wednesday when we went to church at this church, we went to, to New Life at Cape. I don't know if anybody's familiar with New Life, Pastor Jack Cathcart. And it seemed like we would have a question. Well, if he didn't get up there and answer that question, I'm not standing here. It was like, wow, did you hear that? We were always going, did you hear that? Did you hear that? You know, he answered that question we had no understanding of. So we got so excited. So eventually we, I took my children and we went up there, all five of us took our families and went to, to New Life and went to church. But I, I still didn't have a total understanding of the, you know, being baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so I, I would pray, and I would pray, and I think, Lord, I know it's from you, and I wanted it so bad. I just, I always knew there was more for me when I went to the other church. I just, I just, that was that rumbling inside of me. I knew, Lord, there's more. What is it? What is it? And so I, um, I had a chair in the living room that I, that I would pray at. I would get on my knees, and I would pray. And, but I would pray in the natural, and then I would wait. And I didn't, I didn't receive anything. So I talked to a lady at church, and she said, uh, well, honey, she said, you have to put voice to that. She said, you have to put voice to that, and, and God's going to bless you with that, you know. So I put the children to bed, and I went in and got on my knees, and uh, I prayed in the natural. And then I just put voice to it, and God just blessed me so with just two or three syllables. I just said, Julie, just two or three syllables. And I knew that was it. And it's a good thing I was on my knees because I'm telling you, that was the more that I was looking for. I was just overwhelmed. And I got my Bible, and I opened it up, and I went to Galatians. I think it was Galatians 5. And uh, God just poured all that about bondage and everything. You know, I just kind of been under like a bondage. I just, I had no understanding of what God wanted to really give me, you know. And uh, I just give him praise and glory for that. And then I learned about the supernatural healings. And, you know, he just opened every door. And it was just like he took a key, and I can just see it. He took a key and put it in the <laughs> Bible for me and opened it. And I'd been in church forever. And it was just like the word was alive to me. And I understood everything. And I learned, and I, I was so eager to learn more. And I just want to give God the blessings and the praise for that. So do you think that the baptism of the Holy Spirit just opens you up? And then when you speak in these tongues, there's something about the tongues that opens you up to understanding things in the spirit realm. Don't you think oh, so? I think it, oh, now, it's just like do you think you're better than Christians who don't speak in tongues? No, no, no. Because I, I, all the people I went to church with are good, are good Christian people. Yeah. But I just know right at that moment there was more for me. God yeah. had more for me. It's like the water and thing, I, isn't it? Yes, and I was have some more. It, see? Yes, and I was <laughs> have seeking some more. that. Yeah, just have more and more and more. But I think if you seek it, God is an awesome God, and He'll yes. give us what we desire. He'll give us the desires of our hearts. And so if you seek that. You earnestly seek yes. it, he'll give it to you. Yeah. And I praise God. You know, everybody, I think, uh, now the Apostle Paul said something. Now I'm going to talk to you about tongues for just a second. Apostle Paul said something in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. He said, I, he said, 
um, I would that you all spake with tongues, especially, or rather, that you prophesy. In other words, he's saying, he said, now the best thing for the whole congregation is if you prophesy in English so they can understand. He said, but I want, he said, I would that you all spake in tongues. I would that you all. He says, I want you all to. I would that you all did it. And even more than that, I want you to prophesy because when you prophesy in English, everybody's encouraged. But there's something about the, the, the tongues does, I'm telling you, the tongues just changed my life. It just changed my life. It opened you up to all the other nine gifts of the Spirit. Or, yeah, and it just opened you up. There's just more. Now, I got to answer a question for you. Some of you having a problem with one specific area of this, and I'm going to answer Julie's question with this, and it's Acts 2.4. And this morning, I was thinking about this, and I saw something, and, and I'm going to tell you what I saw in a second, and then we'll have to quit, because I can't keep you here all day, although I'd love to. You have no idea how I don't, I don't mind teaching for three or four hours, but you don't have that attention <coughs> span, so. Uh, but, uh, Acts 2, 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, anybody know anything about verbs and nouns and everything? I'm going to explain something to you in a second. And they, all, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I'm going to trick some of you, and I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm going to let you answer it wrong if you do. And if you don't, don't feel bad if you do. Who spoke in tongues in this verse? Who spoke in tongues? They spoke in tongues? Okay, that's true. You got it right. They spoke in tongues. The people did the speaking. Now, who gave the words? The utterance. The Holy Spirit gave the utterance. But the Holy Ghost didn't speak. Some of you that have not spoken in tongues, but want to are waiting for the Holy Ghost to speak through you. And it'll never happen. Because He doesn't speak. He gives you the words. and But you have to, like Debbie said, Debbie has it so good, what she said today, you have to give voice to it. Right. I know people who, I, I've talked to them, I said, well now when we prayed for you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, did you have any words come to your th mind? that were unusual gibberish sounding words or any other kind of words that was a different language? Oh yeah, I had those. Well, why didn't you speak them out? Well, I was waiting for the Holy Ghost to make me do that. Well, you'll just be waiting until kingdom come. He ain't going to make you do nothing. Do you think the Holy Ghost will force you to do anything? Did he force you to the altar when you got saved? He's not going to force you to speak those words out. I saw this picture this morning to answer your question. I just saw this little, this little, I don't know why I saw a record, you know, and you put the needle on the record, and it says, Hola, Senor. Hello, which means, hello, hello, sir. Hola, Senor. Now, now you say, now you say, hola, Senor. Okay, hola, Senor. Now, not in mean you, but anyway, okay. Has anybody ever practiced a foreign language? Well, you listen, these little records Daniel has. He does Spanish and German. And so the little thing will say, now, now you say this, and then you repeat after the, the thing that says, now let's say this. That's very similar to what happens to you in tongues. Some of you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, and you've never spoken in tongues, but the words have come to you, and God has said, hola, senor, and you said, I'm waiting for God to make me say hola, senor. When's God going to make me say, Hola, Senor? He ain't done it yet. <laughs> what, do you understand what I'm telling you? God is not going to make you say your part, Hola, Senor. Which I'm not even saying that. You know what I'm saying. The tongues, he gives the utterance, and you just go with it. And that, those tongues will do amazing things. Now I'm going to, oh gosh, help me, Jesus. I really, really really want to have all morning for this. So, the words that you get, Julie, 
those words that you've got. And I've heard you speak in tongues when you first got baptized in the Holy Spirit back in 1980-something. But those words that you got and that you spoke out, sometimes our, our mind gets in the way. People, put your hand on either side of your head. Say, this is my problem. That's it. Our brain is a problem. If you think you're going to figure tongues out with your natural mind, just shoot yourself in the head because you're not. It isn't going to happen. You don't figure it out with your mind. You figure it out with your spirit. And it's a language of the spirit. So it just comes up subconsciously. Well, it sounds like I'm making things up. Well, of course it would. If you were saying, hola, senor, que pasa? And you don't know any Spanish, that would sound like gibberish to you, wouldn't it? That was German. I said, How can you forbid, forbid me your love? Blah, 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 something else. I don't remember it all. Now, am I talking gibberish? Did that sound, how many of you would agree that sounds like gibberish? Okay, let me tell you what I said in German. I said, think never to have thought. For thinking of thought is thoughtless thinking. <laughs> so in a sense, it is gibberish. However, what I'm telling you is, don't be afraid of tongues. There's tremendous benefit of yielding uh, to the tongues. It, there's just tremendous benefit of it. I would like you to talk into this. Like when you first start speaking in tongues, a lot of times you just get one little sound, one little syllable that you repeat over and over again. But then with practice and with speaking in tongues and as you build your confidence, God adds to that language. I've seen it happen in other people and in myself, but that language grows. So if you're like, well, that's just one little sound, you know, like that can't be it. Or why am I saying this? You know, that, that's probably a very powerful word that God started you off with. I know um, I was telling a friend of mine a while back about how that's how I started when I was a kid. And, he, and I was telling him the sound. He's like, well, that was Jesus. You were saying Jesus. So I'm like, wow. I mean, he just interpreted it right there. Like, that, that was Jesus. I'm like, well, that's probably why God picked that as my first word. But. Well, you know, babies start talking one word at a time. And when you learn uh, any foreign language, it comes one word at a time, you know. And the more you use it, the more, you, you know, it'll flow. And don't worry about if it, well, it just sounds funny. Of course it sounds funny. Get that out of your head. What are you, are you crazy? Of course it's going to sound funny. What are you, new? Yes. Let it sound funny. That, that, yes, God chose the foolish things to confound the wise. Okay, go ahead, Brother Dan. I just, uh, so many I seek to speak in tongues. But we were talking about interpretation. I wonder how many of us pray a real short prayer and when, it, when tongues are start to be spoken. God, give me the interpretation. And so many are, are set back and say, well, I went for somebody to interpret. But if you ask God, give me the interpretation, I think you'll have more interpretation given than what, is norm, what we normally see. Because mm -hmm. everybody wants to speak in tongues, but it's a little <laughs> more scary to stand up and say it in English mm -hmm. and think whether I'm right or not. Right. Am I in the flesh or am I in the <laughs> spirit? Yeah. One, of the, one time years ago, uh, a pastor called me up to the front of the church and he wanted to pray over me. And then his sister-in-law came up and she started speaking to me in tongues. She was just rattling off in tongues. And uh, uh, have you ever watched a a thing on TV and so there's this guy and, and he's he's from Iran or something and then there's this guy over here in the little corner and he's interpreting it and he's telling it just right at the same time you know about what that's what happened to me this lady was speaking in tongues at me and she was prophesying to me in tongues with what she was doing and I I heard her speak the tongue and at the same time right in the background louder I heard the English of it nobody else heard it but I did and it was very clear. To, and then the pastor turned around and he told me the same thing that she said to me that I'd already heard the interpretation of from the Spirit. And it was a sign for me, is what it was. It was a sign for me. But there's lots of ways that this, this happens. Carol. Uh, 
this is just to show you the Lord don't stick to one rule because the words were put in my mouth. But I was, a I was 15 years old. There was a revival at a Pentecost church I went to. And I prayed every single night. People around me, I was sweating, I was hot, I was tired. I kept every night. And they thought I had it, but I thought because it wasn't coming out, I didn't have it, and I was just struggling. So we went to the altar one night, and I was just by myself at the altar. And it, the words just came one after another. I was just like looking around, and, and they were just coming out my mouth. But I know that God does not work the same way with everybody. No, he doesn't. And he was honoring no, he doesn't. My, right. my toil, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. He's honoring you. That's beautiful. Well, I, I want to tell you the oh, I want to tell you the the different benefits that tongues brings. Um, but what? Let me just tell one before we leave, because there's there's eight or ten that I could tell you, but I'm just going to tell one of them. But one of the really awesome things that I think that this is why I think everybody should speak in tongues. I really do. Apostle Paul said. He wished that you all spoke in tongues. Well, I, me and the Apostle Paul agree. I want you all to speak in tongues. But I want you just to, to receive it. And then when it comes, and maybe if you want to sometime, we'll have a laying on of hand service and pray for you. But I'm not going to push you into speaking in tongues up here. I don't like to do that. Some people do that. I don't like it. I'll lay hands on you, and then you go home. I've had people speak, uh, receive the baptism. The language start flowing when they're in the in their car, and the, on the toilet. I mean, just all kind of places. In the shower. Just things where you wouldn't think it would happen. But one of the main things that is so important about speaking in tongues is, um, you know, is how that when we pray in the Spirit in tongues, we can pray about things that we don't know. Because in uh, Romans 8, 26, it says, when we do not know what to pray for as we ought, the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered in articulate speech. So the, the, the reason, if you didn't speak in tongues for any other reason in the whole entire world, it would be so you could pray for your children's safety when you don't know what's going on, but God knows. Or it would be so that you could pray about some situation that you don't understand, but God understands it. And you can pray things in that are great mysteries. See, in 1 Corinthians 14, I think it's 2, it says, How be it, uh, he that speaketh in unknown tongues speaketh not unto men, but unto God. How be it, in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries, the hidden things. When you are praying, the best part of tongues is not church. That's the least benefit of tongues. The best part of tongues is for you to have in your private prayer life at your house. It's like that one, sun, that, that one morning in 19, March 13th of 1990, when I woke up and knelt at the bed in T Dallas, Texas, of a, where I was staying with a friend checking out a Bible school down there. And I'm, I start praying in tongues, I'm praying in tongues, I'm praying in tongues. And I have a vision of a tornado. And I, be, I continue to pray in tongues. 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 And finally, the burden lifts off of me. And Daniel, what happened? Where were you, son, when the F5 tornado took a half of mile gap at 5.30 that afternoon, 5.36 that afternoon? You were in the basement quoting Psalms, 91, you and mom and Andrew. That morning, the Lord showed me that tornado. And not one person was killed in Heston, Kansas with an F5 that was a half a mile wide and ripped through that town and just absolutely did devastation like you would not even believe. Well, I'm not saying that my praying in tongues protected those people but it might have. It might have because, well, I just, you know what? I think it did. I just think it did because when you pray in the Spirit, you're speaking in the tongues of men and of and angels and you're telling angels, go and keep these people safe. 
And so I really truly do believe that people would have died in Heston, Kansas, had not the Lord at six that morning, six or no, it was seven. I wouldn't have got up at six. It was about seven, seven thirty that morning. On my knees, praying in tongues, saw that saw that uh, tornado, and I prayed against that tornado because I was oh, when I saw that tornado in my vision, I just went to town praying in tongues, and I I know that the angels just blocked that tornado from hurting anybody. No one was hurt or killed. That's a miracle. It went right through the middle of town. It's a half a mile wide. It was just something else. That's enough for today. Did anybody learn anything? Okay, we will pick back up uh, next Sunday. It's going to be awesome. You're going to get a lot out of... Uh, the Travis Lee band and please come bring your neighbors plan to eat my chili give a little donation to help with the band and uh, then the next week Nancy and I and Daniel and uh, Brittany are going to be uh, gone doing music at, we're going to be here for part of the worship but we're going to go do music at a different church brother Ron's going to preach Rich is going to do music here with Michael and uh so we'll want you to pray for us as we're slipping out the door to go do music somewhere else. But uh, we got, and then the next Sunday we'll pick back up and see if we can do some more of this. I want your questions. This was fun for me today. I enjoyed it. The interaction is beautiful. I get to hear from you. I get to hear stories from Deb and Carol and different ones. And doesn't that help you just to hear their stories? I think it does. Well, let's stand together. Everybody say this after me. Jesus, I want more of you. I've had a drink, but I want more. I'm going to get full, so full that I'm overflowing. I am not satisfied. I want more. I want more. I want more of you, Lord, in Jesus' name, and I shall have it. Amen. How many of you believes it? All right, well, go and be blessed.